statement, and now it is my pleasure to give Mr. Felipe of Brazil the floor. You have the floor. Bom dia. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Throughout my childhood, I was asked what I wanted to do or to be when I grew up. Many said I would become a politician or something like that. And in fact, that's something I wanted to do, but there was a problem. My childhood was interrupted by child labor. I started working when I was eight. While my friends were having fun on weekends, I waited tables on the beachfront in my city. I had no right to play. This routine was quite exhaustive for me. All day long and under an intense sun, barefoot, working long hours, Every Monday, I was completely worn out when it was time to go to school. This was a 78,000 people uh, inhabitants tourist town in the Brazilian Northeast. But unfortunately, in many places, especially in smaller urban centers, child, child labor is still seen as something natural. Today, I wonder what would I would have become had I kept working. Probably, I would have stopped going to school and maybe... I would already be a father. Today, I thank UNICEF, the Ministry of Public Labor Prosecution, and other institutions that remove children of work to bring them to education. It was exactly through UNICEF that I learned about my rights, that I learned that as a child, I had several rights, and even the right to speak and to express myself as I'm doing now. I am very grateful for that today, and it was through education and engagement that I managed to uh, get out of child labor. But I couldn't just go on with my life after ch leaving child labor, so I decided to fight, fight so that other children can have the same opportunity. And that is how, from a uh, teenager committee in my city, I sought the help from the Ministry of Public Labor to create a committee specifically to fight child labor in my state. Today, there are committees in 16 Brazilian states with over 700 leaders. We also founded a national committee. But this is not just about me. Dear representatives, coming to this meeting from so far away, I need not disguise my purpose. I am fighting for my rights and that of millions of other children all over the world. F fighting for these rights is as important as a country's economy or winning a World Cup. Yes, we are children and we do not have the solution to all the world's problems, but the grown-ups also don't. We are children who often show that we are capable of transforming the world. Incidentally, a child alone confronted the Taliban for the right to have an education and won the Nobel Peace Prize for her bravery. Another child fought the powerful in defense of the environment and raised thousands of voices around the world. And I have been on a, facing a culture on a daily basis that insists on using and exploiting child labor. We are celebrating 30 years of the Convention on the Rights of the Child one of the greatest human rights milestones. And our celebration has to be to fight more than ever, fight so that more and more children can be free, struggling to ensure that Articles 12, 13, 14, and 15 of this convention, which states that all children have the right to participate in social and political life, are guaranteed and enforced, especially at a time when hatred and violence is increasing all over the world planet. I am not just Felipe. I'm the 152 million children around the world who are in child labor. I am the 263 million children who are out of school. I am every girl and every boy whose rights are violated, every child whose voice cannot be heard because of violence. Girls and boys from different countries, ages, and religions are affected by the same problems, a lack of education, child labor, and hunger. In my country, in the Amazon region, eight, nine, and 10-year-old girls are sexually exploited on the riverbanks in exchange for uh, food and uh, fuel for boats. In the Northeast, many children lose their fingerprints in the burning of cashews. Others even lose body parts due to child labor. 
And if they l lose their fingerprints, what happens to their identities? We know they are not the only ones, but we fight daily, so they are the last. But this is not the time to mourn for them, but to fight for them. Time to fight for them so that they can get out of the situation. And thus, millions of other voices will echo around the four corners of the world so we can have several Gandhis, Malalas, and Kailashes. The other day, in an activity with other children who had come out of child labor, I asked them, if you could ask a very powerful person something, what would it be? And one of them replied, I would ask for a pencil and notebook for me and my friends. See, even a child who has little wants to share. You, who have a lot more, should do a lot more. This is the power of a child's voice, and you are these powerful people, people who can enable this change. Just listen to what we have to say. In every country in the world, without exception, there is exploitation of child labor. You, adults, can and should invest in engagement as a way to end several social ills. Since we, the children, are the ones children and adolescents who have to suffer them in our daily lives. Children and teenager engagement is a right, not a privilege. Children's rights are discussed with children. Only education and citizen engagement by children and teenagers will be able to change the world. Thank you very much.